Okay, here we go with the branding. This is a Touchstone Publishers presentation, your trusted source of leadership knowledge. Good morning, once again, everybody. You know, just like in the introduction, we've got a great guest. Mr. Tucker is here to gonna really help us answer some of these problems that we face as leaders all around. Good morning, Terry. Thank you for joining us. Glenn, thanks for having me. I'm really looking forward to talking with you today. Yeah, it's going to, we had some great information that I think a lot of people want to dig into, but I have my traditional first question for you, and that's going to be simply this. What is it that we do not know about you or your organization that we should know about? What is it that we don't know about that we should know about? Either you or your organization or family. I don't know. I was lucky enough my senior year in college to play college basketball against North Carolina and Michael Jordan. Okay. It was Jordan's freshman year. It was 1982. North Carolina won the national championship that year. And then the following night, it was a doubleheader. We got to play against Jim Balvano and North Carolina State's team, who the following year in 1983, they won the national championship. So I was fortunate enough to play against two national championship teams during my senior year in college. So that's something that most people don't know about me. And I find that interesting. And that's actually, in hindsight, what did you notice about the coaching from a leadership business perspective, the head coaches on both sides? I mean, yeah, I played for a man by the name of Les Robinson. And as far as I know, this is still true. Les Robinson is the only individual who was a division one basketball coach and an athletic director at three different schools. So he wow. was, he was the coach and athletic director at the Citadel where I played the coach and athletic director at East Tennessee State University. Mm -hmm. And eventually when Jim Valvano got into a little bit of trouble at North Carolina State, Les took over as the as the basketball coach at NC State and also was the athletic director. So as far as I know, he's the only person who's ever who's ever done that. And just a super guy, a guy who cared about his players, cared about yeah. the fact yeah. that it was more than just basketball. I think he was one of those individuals they cared more about what we did outside of basketball and after basketball than really the four years that we spent with him. And still a, still an active individual, still involved, he goes to all the Citadel basketball games down in Charleston. On the other side of the coin with Dean Smith, Dean Smith was known for his what was called four corners offense. Um, yeah. I'm going to date myself a little bit here, but when I played college basketball, there was no three-point no line, <laughs> yeah. and there was no shot clock. And Dean Smith was famous for pulling out the ball when he got a lead and working the clock. And that, But his players loved him, and he was incredibly well-respected. He was a very well-respected coach, both from his players' perspective and from the coaches that coached against him in that. So mm -hmm. I think they were both leaders in their own way. Obviously, I knew Les a whole lot more than I knew Dean Smith, but right. two incredibly gifted individuals that gave of themselves to their players. Quick side note, then I'm going to jump into my very first question I had for you. But have you noticed how even these coaches who are successful have gotten this emotional intelligence thing down pretty much? I mean, even some of the not so successful ones, they have a way of tapping certain parts of emotional intelligence to really help them motivate and meet the trips. Have you noticed that? I really have. I was lucky enough to be recruited by Mike Krzyzewski, Coach yeah. K, yeah. when he was an Army. And he yeah. actually came to my house and sat on our couch and said, hey, come play for me at West Point. And I, I'd had three knee surgeries. And I just wasn't sure my knee was up to the military yeah. side of that. So I turned him down. But a funny story, 20 years later or so, I was living in Cincinnati. I was a policeman. I was working nights. And North or Duke was playing Connecticut for the national championship. So I recorded it because I was working that night. And the next night I went down and our daughter was, I don't know, three maybe, and watched the game. And Duke lost to Connecticut. And at the end, there's an embrace, a hug between William Avery and Coach K. And for the next two weeks after that, my daughter would say every night after dinner, Hey dad, let's go watch the, let's go watch the hug. And I was like, the hug, what are you talking about? No. You know, it wasn't, the, <laughs> yeah. it wasn't the game that motivated her or that she resonated with. It was the hug between coach K and Avery. So I sat down and I wrote coach, coach K a note. I said, Hey, you probably don't remember me. It's been 20 years, but here's an experience that happened with my daughter. And 
I got a letter back from a handwritten letter back from him about two weeks later, basically saying, thanks for telling me this. Thanks for sharing it. I get close to my players. It was a tough loss for us and stuff like that. That's class. That's he didn't have to do that. I didn't even play for him. I, I said no to him, but that's what class looks like. That's what somebody who's emotionally intelligent progresses or, or looks like. It's reaching out. It's developing relationships with people that you don't need to, but you want to. You have that emotional intelligence and you want to have that connection, even with a player that ended up not playing for you. See, that's a powerful story. That's a powerful story. And the connection that you and your daughter put together from that's powerful and the connection that Coach K came back with it on. 